Oh hey, Caraway's back. Mr. Breadroll oh, man. Was talking about. We've confirmed that it's a soft and he looks spot. even lumpier the than Soviet usual. Mm -hmm. Has he been working out? Zenith's ranks are filled with ex-Soviet special forces. Sorry to interrupt, sir, but we've got bogeys. Well, no hope for a surprise attack then. Good luck, gentlemen. Caraway out. Well, you're fucked. <laughs> Well, nice knowing you. <laughs> we'll inform your next of kin. No, never mind that. You got boost power! Oh, what the fuck? Yep. This is the best vehicle sequence in any shooter campaign. <laughs> fuck all your <laughs> halos. Fuck that one bit in Resident Evil 6 that was also bad. You get to know, control the solid three and the turret, and it has boost power at the same time. Oh man, this just sounds like a complete clusterfuck. And looks it. Oh, but uh, e even better, just look at Ivan's arms as I aim the turrets. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> There's no fixing that! Dear god, man, you need to see a chiropractor. No, these are perfect Russian arms. They work as intended. <laughs> You'll see, Ivan, when you stretch arm out so far, enemy is scared because they can see your ligaments disconnect. You know where this myth of Stretch Armstrong came from? It was me. <laughs> Isn't Stretch Armstrong a toy? It doesn't matter. That is what American imperialist pig want you to think. <laughs> so yeah, and, and the funny thing is like, when mentioning all like the different vehicle segments... Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention, fuck 50 cents, he didn't do this shit. <laughs> I don't, at least I don't think his car had like a boost. We do. Uh, I, I don't remember, I just remember all the ramps. Yeah. Of which we do hit some. Even a oh, big ass well. one. Oh, mandatory. Yeah. I would be very disappointed if we didn't. But I also also the bullets like, seem to be coming from behind you for some reason. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> that uh, I'm, I'm going to worry about that because it's breaking <laughs> the laws of physics. Yeah, this is this is one of those segments where like this mission and mission two are the ones where I found that the graphical like issues come up the most, and it's pretty much proportional to like if you're like in big bright daylight areas. Because when we went to Panama, that was very brightly lit. So yeah, just yeah. don't don't mind the black slopes on the sides. It's it, it's normal. It, this is okay. D don't pay attention. <laughs> That blue one, don't pay attention. That red one at the distance, don't mind it. Nope, everything's fine. Totally fine. How are you? Yes. So here's the big ass ramp that I was talking about, which is more like a big ass exploding bridge. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Accelerating jump the gap. We did it. And we could mine for some rainbow war while we were there. Yeah. Make some sherbets need... on the fly. I went across the road and got you some orange sherbet. <laughs> Had that stuck in my, my, my head for the last couple of days, no idea why. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that was close. Keep going. I'm getting the tunnel. And that's it for this vehicle section. I think I can officially state that this is the best part of the game so far. It's up there. It's definitely up there. Also, I, I want to mention one thing as clarification for any of the RE6 apologists out there. Yes, I know that that vehicle sequence in Chris' campaign does have a boost button, but the difference is that because it's co-op, one player has to drive and use boost, and the other uses the turret. So it doesn't count. It does not count and as this where you use all three at once. And it's Resident Evil 6, so your opinion is automatically invalidated. Yeah, just yeah. go back to the mercenaries hole that spawned you, because that's the only <laughs> part of RE6 that no one will argue about. You're, you're just not allowed to have opinions anymore. We are banning you from having opinions. Yeah. Sorry, John Muncher, you are not allowed to like this video or this game. <laughs> <laughs> do not like, do not comment, certainly don't sub actually not do subscribe. Also, Dino Crisis sucks. Up. Anyway. <laughs> hey, Dino Crisis 2 was awesome. Yeah, okay, I, I, I won't... Uh, yeah, I won't deny that. I was just, <laughs> I just rub an extra salt in the wound for Jaw because he is like the internet's one Dino Crisis super fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone has to be. Yeah, someone has to. I mean, how else did Capcom notice him? <laughs> Senpai noticed me. Shame my opinions are terrible. <laughs> this is a bit tricky trying to get that shot, but okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so I know that we all had a blast going through that initial vehicle section. The rest of this mission, though, can go straight to fucking hell. <laughs> It is, I am going to say, 100% the hardest mission of the entire game, especially for score attack and doing it the way that I am doing it. Like, you know how much I have relied on M'Baku in order to get the points that I have, but also to not die. There are moments throughout this where I had to be extra strategic with where I made my backup saves and figure out the best well, way to like quick. get the maximum amount of points without losing my Mbaku from taking too much damage because this game because this is where it goes all I'm going to say ninja guy into master ninja difficulty on us wait my oh, like boy. Inside. yeah we'll cut through the lock this current section's not too bad. Like it's like what we're about to do is basically like sniping enemies through like these windows, but but that's fine. It's everything after that that's the problem. That his hand was incredibly floppy there. Yeah. We have a nice beanie though. Shame that it's about the size of a riot helmet. Oh, and we're back with the confetti. Yeah. That that that's the emulator for you. <laughs> I know, it's great. It looks like you're beating up on, um, pinatas every five seconds. Man, that's what this game was actually missing. It needed more goofy, like, like those old school cheats, you know, like paintball mode and shit like that. Yeah. Big head mode. Every game needs a big head mode. Like, oh, no, it's like, like, Broke is just big head mode as it is. Woke is DK mode with big head and arms. <laughs> Gigantic hands. That was that was one of my favorite cheats back in Goldeneye. <laughs> just just looking at big arm, big head, fake Pierce bras, and then like flail around in death cutscenes. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's a cosmodrome on the next island. Cosmodrome, my ass. That's just the Soviet way to say ICBM launch site. Tomato, tomato. Major, we need transport to Milad. She brought ASAP. Russian is much more complicated language than people expect. <laughs> also, it's Cosmodrome cool sounds cooler than whatever the hell you never said. Seen one like that. You were never meant to. It was going to be a surprise for your birthday. You've gone and ruined it now, you prick. <laughs> Head for your LZ. Sending coordinates now. Moving out. Meanwhile, see what Carraway has on a Soviet satellite called Sar Bell, and run it against an ex-Red military general named Isaac Kumano. Roger that, but get to your rendezvous point. Isaac who? The final boss. Uh, spoilers? Eh. I mean, it was eventually gonna be the case. I mean, we I mean admit admittedly, I thought Big Mouse was going to be the final boss because he's the most striking design, but... No, but I mean, like, you saw him at the beginning of the game when the satellites were blowing up. Oh, that douchebag. Yeah. I thought also he was just, like, generic dude. No, we also saw him in the flashback with C4 as a kid. Yeah, I was just too busy being creeped out by the implications. <laughs> That's I mean, I, I know cool, you, I know you mean <laughs> creepy sex implications, but there's also the other bad implication of the fact that Ivan was training a child soldier. Well, you know, first one, then the other. <laughs> True. I, I can care about both, you know, it's just one takes precedence. Yeah. Admittedly, like, I am weirdly dense on these sort of things, so I didn't even, like, think of it, like, as like as that I only saw it as like the oh he's just training a child soldier <laughs> yeah no it's like they blatantly set those two up as having romantic tension it's like dude you knew her when you were 29 she was 10 not cool so yeah. you've not even made Chinatown what is wrong with you Roman Polanski oh yeah that's that that's a that's a poll 
<laughs> so now we're we're placing C4 charges on these ICBMs. And once we do that, and this door opens, that's when the real bullshit starts. Oh, that's when the bullshit starts. <laughs> oh yeah, because uh, once we turn the corner, after triggering M'Baku, see what's in the distance? Uh, oh boy. Yeah, and it's not one, and not two, as you might see. There are four of these motherfuckers just raining lead on you. Oh, fuck right off with that bullshit. This, this is like, if you don't have M'Baku, you have to, like, I feel exclusively just hang back, use cover, and shoot your bullets. And even if you have M'Baku, you still have to hang back and soften them up as best you can with bullets and then go in for the melee kills on at least one. Because sometimes it's like, they are dealing damage to you at the same rate that you deal damage to them, so it's basically the one thing you have to do to, like, keep your M'Baku gauge at a standstill. <laughs> I'm sure there's a couple of bits in uh, Gears of War that are just like this, but I'm drawing a blank right now. Yeah. Admittedly, it's like, if you were really good, like, I again, going back to Iconoclast, he did, like, do a particular strat where he lured them behind one of, like, the shipping containers and, like, isolated one at a time to do it that way, but, like, it also takes, I'd say, a lot longer to do. Hmm. But I decided to do it this way just so I could, like, Chain my Mbaku into this section and get all these headshots. And oh yeah, I actually forgot to like mention with this is that I think there's also like another. Uh, this is actually I think like the one mission in which I actively dropped the shotgun out of my out of my loadout because not only do I need the sniper rifle for these like headshot bonuses, but I also need the heavy machine gun because of those heavy bastards. <laughs> Like, also, shotgun the... is not good for this. This is the one mission where I say it's the exception. <laughs> also, did the auto-aim for a second there target the head lying on the ground rather than the guy behind it? I believe it did. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when stupid shit like that happens in games. Yeah. It's still not as good as that one bit in the Big Mouse fight where we just shot the dude's head off and it still tracked it <laughs> flying across the room. <laughs> Clunk. Yeah. So that was like the first here. of the two really bad parts of this level. Well, what happened? Uh, we get a little interim fight where we are actually going to get introduced to a new enemy type that is mildly more annoying, but like still manageable. I, be I believe you made mention to the frogs a few a few videos back, and it's going to be more apparent here. Yeah. Glad that the ice is totally thick enough to sustain all of us. <laughs> Especially considering the three quarters of the team are wearing heavy mechs. Yeah, just and Ivan doesn't even need to do that. Like he he can make the same drops that they do, but without their gear. <laughs> Again, proving that he is a perfect Russian man. In Russia, you get born with power armor on inside. Maybe if you looked up. Maybe if someone turned the contrast down. Nah, no, sorry, that's an emulator issue. That's really all. Like, mm, that's the best you can worry about. But yeah, yeah. We have we have stealth camouflage soldiers who are women. There's okay. your frog comparison. Okay. Yeah. This is the Lumilla I... unit. <laughs> like uh. Do you remember in the uh, in the flashback cutscene of Mission Two, where like Ivan like betrays the sod, and like there was that Russian uh, girl that was like, "What? He's a deserter. Shoot him." She's, Vaguely. Yeah, she's the one that is like the leader of these female soldiers. Stealth camo um, is their deal. Guessing she's going to be our boss for this chapter as well. Uh, no, not this chapter, actually. Oh, the fi the final, no, like, if you want to be, like, real swarmy, like, the real boss fight of this, of this chapter is the final combat encounter we're about to get into. Because it's oh, a boy. fucking doozy. Ooh. 
an, an interesting thing about this, uh, about these enemies too, is that um, because of their stealth camo, the the auto aim for like the aim lock becomes a bit more inconsistent. You can make it more reliable if you actually like do something to like deal damage to them, or if they're actively attacking because their positions are then known. So well, here's the why, final they... encounter. In an environment where I would say that this would be one of the best in the game because there's like the two like uh, there's like the upper and bottom layers. But this is like just a nightmare. I don't and know it... why, but for some reason the throat slitting animation just feels really gratuitous. Yeah. But that but that just only happens because there are because the Ludmilla units melee weapons are knives only, so and that and that's the and that's the kill that Ivan always does when he steals their knife. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems a bit kind of icky. Yeah. I mean, it's also pretty gratuitous to like take one of their grenades, cook it, shove it to, like down like their back neck hole, and like leave them to just scream as they're about to explode. Oh no, that's just good fun in games. Yeah, but this but this is the first part where you realize that like if you don't have Mbaku, even if you were being skillful and dodging, that dude with the axe would just come up behind you and like end you instantly. <laughs> this is this is the other area where we get like a whole lot of the heavy dudes, and I just like expend so much of my bullets to try and like down these guys. Sometimes yeah, I, I like, them right into his crotch. Yeah, and sometimes I shoot them a bit too much because it, the bullets end up killing them before I do the melee kill, which means I lose a few extra points, but who cares? Yeah, survival's a bit more important. Yeah, this is like, if you're trying to get the optimal score, this this is why it's the hardest. Because you're struggling to figure out, like, what's the best way to get them while still surviving. And I'm doing absolutely everything I can to keep my Mbaku gauge up. And I'm doing a pretty good job, but as you'll find... There is one more enemy left in this that is like hard to find, and it's what ends up making me lose my Mbaku timer for the final wave. It's because there's one asshole up on that bridge, and she does not come down. Wow. That is some prime dickery. And what's worse is that whether she stays up there or not is random. I just got a bad <laughs> angle. And then three assholes just show up with chain guns, because why the fuck not? Uh, two, two with chain guns, one with a chainsaw, and one with an axe. So we got another four on our asses. <laughs> and wow. I, and funny enough, I ran out of Mbaku right when they all spawned. So I just become perfect Russian coward as I fall back to Delta Force and let them help me. Because <laughs> fortunately, not only are they somewhat accurate, but their bullets do contribute to damage. See... My um, bar for decent AI is always going to be Clyde Barker's Jericho, because really? the AI in that doesn't re doesn't recognize the difference between hitting a target and aiming. <laughs> There's yeah, enemies with specific weak spots, and if you don't shoot those, it does no damage whatsoever. And yeah. they they'll just stand there for hours pumping ammo into this thing and not hitting a single weak spot whatsoever. And it's like. You're, you're, you're no good at this. I would also like to say that, like, getting up to high ground when you're at this wave is actually futile because you realize very quickly that there's less cover uh, on the high ground, and that means those heavy gunners will just always hit you. So I made a slight mistake on that front. You mean Obi-Wan Kenobi lied? Yes. Damn it. Can't well, trust anyone these days. Okay, it's a, okay, it's a lie... In the, in the context of if they were using guns. Because <laughs> From they a certain were, point of because view. Because they weren't, and they were just using, like, dumb lightsaber bullshit. It was like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's that. Fuck that sequence. We're out of the worst, the hardest level of the whole game. Yeah, that was not fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. This and because of the specific saves I had to make, that meant there were fewer segments, and that meant a lot more time spent with the emulator running and causing the graphics to corrupt. Okay, what the hell is she doing away from the carrier? Because like, she, she was bringing the helicopter to ferry us over to the next island, but that blew she's up. She's the tactical support. She's supposed to be like five miles back from the front line. Yeah, but she's all that's left. <laughs> also, weren't there like a lot less of these guys earlier? 
Holy shit, you're right. Like, so suddenly we have like 10 more guys. Well, yeah, because we all need them to die. <laughs> oh, fair point. For drama. That's what good luck beats. It's your own point. You'll need it more than I will. Are you sure? Also, you will only be able to use this in the cutscene that it's allowed for. Sorry. <laughs> no no real revolver for you. Eh, uh, he's only okay then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's You're funny how like too bad. unforgettable all of Delta Force is, except for Bob. <laughs> Probably because they knew that, like, Bob is, like, one of the, like, most easy-to-remember generic English names ever. Well, there was also Mike, who got shot in the head earlier. And I only remember his name because whenever I hear the name Mike in a game, I think Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Mike! He knew a good bar! <laughs> Rip. Yeah. That's what this game's missing. We need our actual mic equivalent. <laughs> we we need a chopper fighting side by side as, as we blow shit up. <laughs> but it turns out it's Chopper Dave. Nah. No, actually, it's it's gonna be even better next video. <laughs> <laughs>